A very good morning children. Hope you all are doing well. Well, now we'll continue with the poem How to Tell Wild Animals. Today, we'll be doing the summary of the poem and also the poetic devices. So, let me just run you through the summary so that it will be a nice recap for you as well because you've already heard the explanation of all the stanzas. Okay, children. Now, the poet here is describing the various wild animals. These animals are very dangerous and she has introduced them one by one to us in a very funny way. First of all, she tells us about the Asian lion. She says that if you are visiting the jungles of the east and you come across an animal which has a tawny skin, that is yellowish brown skin, and he roars so loudly that you will die out of fear, then that is the Asian lion. And then she talks about the Bengal tiger. She tells that this royal animal at once attacks and kills the man. She says uh, by adding humor that if this beautiful black striped animal kills you and eats you, then you have surely met the Bengal tiger. After this, she says that if the reader met an animal that has black spotted skin and it at once jumps on you, then it means the reader has met the leopard and she says that if one will cry out in pain it is of no use because the leopard will jump and jump and leap and leap on you again and again then she talks about the bear she says that the bear will hug you tightly and put you to death she says that it may seem very friendly but the bear's hug is quite fatal. So that is how we recognize a bear. After this she asks a question to the readers. Do they know how to recognize wild beasts in the jungles? She says that if you are an inexperienced person it will be very difficult for you to recognize the hyena and the crocodile. So she says that the best way to differentiate these animals is by knowing that a hyena smiles when it attacks and kills its prey and the crocodile has tears in its eyes when it eats its prey. And the last one in the list is the chameleon. She says that this lizard-like creature is very tiny in size. It does not have any wings or ears just like the lizard. The only thing that will make us differentiate between the lizard and the chameleon is the chameleon knows how to change its color according to the color of the surface. So, if you see an animal and you don't find anything there, then be sure that it is the chameleon. Okay, children. So, I'm sure that you've understood the poem. You've now that you've heard the summary as well. You read the poem once again and then you try to understand. You'll be able to follow better. Well, children. Now, we'll check the poetic devices used in stanza 1. Now, to make it easier for you, I have highlighted some of the words over here. Like chance, advance, east, beast, dine, line. I've given the color code for you to see the rhyme scheme. So, the poetic devices used in the stanza 1 are rhyme, assonance, allusion, enjambment and inversion. Now, First you see what is the rhyme scheme. Now here we see chance and advance. We have given the color code green. So we have given them the letter A. East and beast rhyme. So we have given them the color code blue and the letter B. And here dine and line are rhyming. And we have given them the letter C. So the rhyme scheme is AB, AB, CC. Here it is written in capital letters but you have to write in small letters. So, this is how the rhyme scheme of a stanza is written and the same rhyme scheme is used in this poem throughout the poem for all the stanzas. Now, I hope you are clear with the rhyme scheme. Now, let's go on to the next a poetic device used. It is assonance. Now, you are familiar with alliteration that is the repetition of the same sound in adjacent words. The consonant sound. Now, here assonance means the use of a vowel sound in nearby words. Now, if you see 
the o sound is repeating in the first line if you see you should go and then should to you so the o sound is repeating it is not in the beginning of the uh, words but anywhere in the middle of the word also it is recurring so that is assonance next is allusion now allusion is the reference to a famous thing place or species so here which species being referred to it is the asian lion the asian lion is being referred to that is allusion next is enjambment now enjambment is the continuation of a sentence to the next line without a punctuation mark if you see the first line if ever you should go by chance there is no comma over here so the line is proceeding to the next one to the jungles in the east so the first line and the second line are one there is no punctuation in the middle so it is an enjambment the continuation of a sentence similarly in the third and fourth line and the fifth and sixth line that is the enjambment now let us understand what inversion is now inversion is change in format of a sentence now the poet to make the words rhyme she changed she has changed the placement of the words for example if ever you should go by chance to the jungle in the east and if there should to you advance instead of writing if a large and tawny beast advances towards you instead of saying that she says if there should to you advance so she has changed the placement of the words that is inversion have you understood children now we've used rhyme assonance allusion enjambment and inversion here in the first stanza now some of the poetic devices will be repeated in the next stanzas as well so i will not be explaining to them to you in detail you have to follow it all right now let's move on to the second stanza now in the second stanza again you see the same rhyme scheme is used a b a b c c and now here you have alliteration as well alliteration of the r sound here in roaming round it is alliteration and then you have again assonance the use of the vowel sound o or sometime roaming round okay noble you yellow round you've got so many places where the o sound is repeated then you have allusion here now which allusion is used here the reference to the bengal tiger the reference to the bengal tiger is used here and then we have enjambment again in the fifth and sixth line there is no punctuation after learn so this is the same sentence this simple rule may help you learn the bengal tiger to discern that is continuation of a sentence to the next line and again you have inversion the bengal tiger to discern she could have said this simple rule may help you learn to discern the bengal tiger but to make it rhyme with learn she used discern in the end that is inversion now the third stanza children again rhyme scheme a b a b c c and now you have the alliteration of the h sound he has in the third line he has that is the alliteration and now you are going to learn something new the poetic license now what is poetic license poetic license is a liberty a freedom to change the spellings now if you see the spelling of lept is actually l e a p t but the poet has has written l e p t and again instead of writing l e a p she has used l e p now this is done to make the um stanza or the poem seem more rhythmic that is why they changed the spellings that is poetic license again you have the assonance use of the vowel sound o and now you also have consonance now consonance is the repetition of the consonant sound here the letter l is repeated heel only lep and lep so l sound is repeated that is the consonants and again you have repetition repetition is lep and lep 
again. So lep and lep is the word repeated. Lep is repeated here. So that is repetition. And now for the fourth stanza children. Now you have rhyme again. A, B, A, B, C, C. And the alliteration, repetition of the consonant sound, W. When, walking. And then you have assonance, use of the vowel sound O and also E. O you already know and you have E also. Meet, creature. Okay. So an enjambment, continuation of a second to the next line. You have enjambment here in the uh, first and second line. And again here you've got in the fifth and sixth line. All right. And also you have personification. Here the bear is personified because... Children, you know, only human beings can hug one another, isn't it? Now, here the bear is shown to be a human. So, it, it the poetess tells us, it hugs you very, very hard. So, here the bear is personified. So, you've understood the poetic devices used in the fourth stanza, children? Very good. And now, let's see stanza five. In stanza five, you have rhyme, A, B, A, B, C, C and alliteration, repetition of the consonant sound N. Here, novice, non plus in line 2. And then assonance, use of the vowel sound O. Novice, non plus, do, to, of, k. Okay. And then enjambment, continuation of a sentence to the next line. Where do you have the enjambment here? In the third and Fourth line here. Yeah, third and fourth line are continued. And then here also we have personification. Now, how is personification used here? Here the hyena and the crocodile are personified. The hyena is said to be smiling and the crocodile weeping. So these two creatures are personified. Now let's move on to the last stanza. Here, rhyme scheme A, B, A, B, C, C. Then alliteration. Repetition of the consonant sound H. Here, he hasn't in the third line. And then consonants, use of the G sound in single wing, G sound. You have the G sound used here. So, my dear children, I hope you have understood the poetic devices used here. And uh, you will be able to read the lesson, poem now and be sure of the poetic devices. It's always good to turn back to your textbook, read the poem once more and just check what all I've explained to you. Alright. So children, with this, we'll conclude with this poem and we'll come to the next class with something else. Alright. Until then, keep yourself safe and happy and God bless you all. Thank you.